Today on Nova Legends Podcast, I had the historic 2008 T.C. Williams, now Alexandria City Titans, uh, the team that broke uh, the unbreakable 27-year drought of Northern Region teams winning the state title. Uh, thanks to Anthony Winbush, we got the whole, we got the big three, we got Coach Ivan Thomas, and we got the rest of the gang uh, back uh, together tonight to talk about uh, that historic season and that run. Uh, guys, uh, great to meet you. Thanks for doing this. Well, thank you for having me, sir. Thank you very much. Oh, of course. Nice to meet you. Yeah, man. Well, look, I, I'm an 84 Robinson grad, and I've been doing a podcast trying to shed some light on the, the northern region, some of our stars, uh, basketball, football, primarily a little soccer. And, uh, you know, and you guys have been talked about a lot over the years. Um, you know, I, I think probably the two most historic teams in northern region history are – or the, the 2008 I'm Titans in, in the 81 um, league. Now, Lewis Lancers, because they were the last team to win the state title before the drought, and you guys were the ones that broke the drought. Um, to give a little context, uh, the Virginia schools were integrated back in around 65, 66 uh, for the first time. And between 65 and 66 and 81, Northern Region was the dominant area of the state. Um George, uh, early uh, Wakefield and Washington Lee back then won state titles. West Springfield won two in the early 70s. T.C. Williams, that many think is the best team to ever played in Northern Virginia in 1977. Uh, they won in 77. Mount Vernon won in 79. Um, and then, as I said before, Lee won. And then, uh, you know, I, I don't know what happened. Uh, maybe the rest of the state caught up to us. Um, maybe the, the urban areas and the other parts of the state were too much for um, the Northern Virginia teams. I, I'm not sure, but there were, there were some years we were, we were so dominated down in state. We, we had to help. We, we held the ball. We wouldn't even play when we went to the state tournament. It was embarrassing. We did have some teams that were close. Uh, Hayfield in 2000, um, Mark Stafford. I forgot who else was on that team. Nice team. Almost won the state. We got close a couple of times, but it was you guys that actually, actually did it. So I thought we'd first go around and you guys could quickly introduce yourselves and, and maybe talk a little bit about uh, just give your, uh, your name, your, your position, um, and, where, and where you played before you went to TC. I know a lot of you guys were Hammond or, or George Washington, um, and then and then we'll and and then you know we'll, we'll get into that that season. Uh, Coach, why don't you start? I know you're a Norview uh, Norfolk uh, graduate, and and uh, you know you went to VCU and stuff. Why don't you you start and introduce yourself a little bit, and then we'll go around the horn. Um, I'm Coach Ivan Thomas. Um, I was the head coach at uh, what TC from what I think 2003 to 2008, or was it 2005 to 2008? I forget. Um, uh, no, because I was at Edison at, at for for a bit of time before I got there. So, um, but yeah, I'm Ivan Thomas. Um, now the associate head coach at Georgetown. Um, I am from uh, Norfolk, Virginia, um, and that to answer your question was the reason why the drought hit. Um, if you look at it, the state title winners had came from the 757 area uh, after that time. And yeah. in actuality, that was my whole focus and goal when I took over T.C. Williams. It wasn't to beat Northern Virginia competition. It was to beat them because mm -hmm. that, that's where the state title winner came from prior to uh, us breaking it every year. I think maybe for maybe a 10 or 15 year streak, maybe a team out of Richmond might've broke it every now and then. I remember JJ spring, uh, JJ Riddick and them won it. Yeah. They broke it, but it, but pretty much the, the state title for triple a back then came out of the seven, five, seven. And uh, so my whole focus, uh, you know, you know, for us was to be able to be competitively tough enough to, 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 to break that cycle and beat those teams down there. So, yeah. yeah. Well, I'll be interested and we'll get to this is if you thought it was, you had a better chance of doing that at, at TC than you had at Edison. Cause I know you were, you were doing well at Edison. I, I refereed your games back then, but why don't we go mm -hmm. to, uh, let's go to Anthony Wimbush. He's one of the big three, as they called it back then. Um, you know, again, Anthony was the one who was kind enough to put this, put this panel together. Anthony, why don't you introduce yourself to us uh, right, uh, right now. Uh, Anthony Wimbush, the position I played was pretty much everything that needs to be done on the court. Uh, I played for Coach Thomas all three years that he was there. And after I left TC, I went on to Loyola for about five years. 
And after Loyola, I went to uh, play in Canada for, for two years. Okay, great. Um, thanks, Anthony. Why don't we uh, go to EJ Jenkins next? Yes, sir. Uh, Edward Jenkins, a.k.a. EJ. <laughs> My role on the team was point guard, sometimes shooting guard. Uh, after I graduated, uh, T.C. Williams, I went on to play at one year. Well, I registered at one year at Mount Olive College in Mount Olive, North Carolina. The following year, I attended uh, Patrick, Henry, Patrick Henry Community College, where I played there for two years. After leaving Patrick Henry, I uh, enrolled in Northwestern Ohio and Lima, Ohio. There I played my previous three years of college basketball. After that, I played a little semi-pro basketball in Lima, Ohio for uh, Lima Express. It's an ABA team. And after that, I went to Sweden, where I lived four and a half years and played uh, pro basketball there also in Trollethon and uh, Bankerit Basket. Yeah, Travis, uh, EJ, I bet you it was tough to, to leave Sweden. That must have been a, a, good, yeah. uh, a good few <laughs> years. We'll, we'll, we'll definitely get to that later. Well, well thanks, EJ. Again, nice to meet you. Thank Let's you, go to uh, 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 Travis. Uh, Travis Berry is uh, next. Hey, how you doing? Travis Berry, uh, shooting guard. Played with Coach Thomas two of the three years he was there. Um, went to Virginia Union out of college, then transferred to UVA Wise for the remaining three years. Hmm. Great. Well, great. Well, nice, nice, nice to meet you, Travis. I uh, admired you a lot on the court the way you played. Uh, let's go to uh, Javante Campbell, another another uh, captain of that team. Uh, but he was a junior that year, and he was he was also a captain, which which means he was he was ready to go. So, why don't you go next, Javante? Uh. Hello, I'm Javante Campbell, um, Bay Bay, aka General. <laughs> <laughs> um, like I said, I grew up in the city of Alexandria, clearly. Um, after um, I finished playing ball at TC, I attended Old Dominion University, where I graduated with a degree in sports management and a minor in recreation and tourism management. Um, now I'm back in the area overseeing uh, youth sports leagues and adult sports leagues. Um, for a few uh, jurisdictions in the DMV area. Um, thanks again for having us. Um, yeah, love being here. Yeah, well, well, lucky to have you, man. This is a this is a great night for us. So let's go to uh, let's go to Tomas Kamaru, who I who I believe is overseas. Overseas, yes, I am overseas, and I'm the actor. <laughs> 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 Name Tomas. Um, I play. I was able to play one full season for Coach Thomas. You know, my junior year, I was I was not able to play due to grades. Senior year, Coach Thomas didn't allow it. You know, I was able to finish the season out. And then, uh, it's a long story after that. But I'm out here playing pro ball out here in Africa now. I play in Liberia, Guinea, oh. and Sierra Leone. Oh, that's so. awesome. Uh, and just to make sure, Josh, Josh is not here, right? Is it okay? Um, well, first, you know, this whole thing started on, on we have a Facebook group. Yo, you, uh, you forgot Blue. What about that Blue? Blue. Oh, Blue. Yeah, Blue's, a, I'm sorry, Blue. <laughs> He's gonna I love that it, man. I love it. Yeah, Blue. Uh, yeah, I'm so, uh, I'm sorry, my man. You, uh, nah, you uh, are, bro. Copeland. You are. I'm Dominique Copeland. Yeah. But, you know, everybody know me as Blue. Um, oh, Blue. I played point guard. I was a defensive specialist. Uh... Oh, hold on, y'all. Hold on. Yeah. My bad. I got. I got. I got. I got kids. I apologize. We, we good. But, uh, you good. But uh, been there before. At the high school, I went to Nova Community College, and then I went to IT Tech, and I uh, uh, I got my associate degree in networking systems. Um, right now, I'm a youth football coach. A coach in the city. Uh, you know, in, in Alexandria. Right now. And I and I coach at DCU football sports as well with Beacon House Falcons. That's great. Well, well, Blue was also a captain as a junior. Um, he was instrumental along with Javanta and EJ mm -hmm. in getting TC back to the to the state tournament, winning in, in the title in 09. So another great. another great player. I, I thought I wanted to start. So this whole thing started. We have a Facebook group called Nova Legends and uh, Anthony was was talking about the other day that uh, we we had a poll who was some of the uh, the best duos in the history of, of the area, 
And Anthony made a comment like, well, you know, we should focus on teams that won the state, the state tournament. Um, and uh, I, I got the feeling that he felt that the, the TC team wasn't given enough the, the respect that it deserved. Um, and I think it's mm -hmm. more of Facebook is more for old people. And you guys are <laughs> kind of the younger generation, <laughs> to be honest. But 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 I did want to start with that. Do you do you guys feel like this TC uh, the Titans team got the respect it deserved? Like for a fan of Northern Virginia basketball, I knew how huge it was for you guys to break through. Not only break through, you guys won all three uh, state games by more than twenty points. I mean, you sent an emphatic message, not just won a state title. But have you guys felt over the years that the team hasn't gotten the respect it deserves? One hundred percent. I agree with that. I definitely agree with that. Yeah, yeah, no, that no, yeah I, I agree with that as well. I I, I agree with that a hundred percent. Let me tell you why. Because of the teams that we had to play. No question. And yeah, we were the only the team, underdogs. Every, yeah, every we're the only team to be both underdog. Eastern Region teams and the Central Region team. Nobody else has done it. Yeah. We're the only team to leave by more than, more than ten finish, points. <laughs> Nobody else has done it. And, and how they did it, emphatically, like it you used the word <laughs> emphatically, like how they did it, like we went like who they did we it had our on. Hard hats on. Like, I mean, people they are, I mean, people, true basketball fans and coaches, they still come up to me. And you know, again, it's not until I sit back and reflect. This team was the this team was a special team, and it is very much. Yeah, they they you know they they are underappreciated, and I think the reason is because you know besides you know I think we had many capable of playing Division One, but I believe Man was the only one correct guys mm -hmm. from that team. Yeah. Winbush was yeah, the only one, crazy. which is crazy. That which is crazy, which yeah. which which actually played. Division one basketball, but let me tell you who we beat, man. Y'all, it's like you don't even understand. Like we beat uh, uh, Kings Fort, who had five Division one guys, two guys that played at Marquette, one played at Cincinnati. You know, they, they, <laughs> they. It, it, it wasn't even fun. We then went on to play Rasul Butler from Petersburg. And they didn't give us a chance. And, you know, we – Those guys off. are so, <laughs> what, so what, 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 appreciated. We beat them by 17. Yeah, we beat them by 17. We beat everybody by double digits. <laughs> double digits. <laughs> it, it, it wasn't even – it wasn't even close, yeah. you know. No. It, it just wasn't close. That so I would say yes that this team is so uh, underappreciated, you know, in terms of what they did and what they accomplished for Northern Virginia, and you know I don't even know if they got the celebration that they deserve. I remember no, winning we, the title. No, we got we got steak dinners for a week. I Yo, did you? Boy. <laughs> I, I feel like it should have been for months. Been a while. That was like, yeah, I'm I agree with that, coach. I agree yeah, with that. That was, <laughs> that was, good. That was good. That was just good. Oh, man. I'm done. So, but, place. I'm done. No, it was, it was, it was, it was a, it was from a basketball um, purist and, and just to be a part of it. It was some of the best basketball um, that I've ever seen as a coach. And that, that, that's at any level, because you can only coach at the level that you're at. Like in terms of the way that this team functioned as a unit, as a fist, as a as a product, like it 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 was it was some it was a thing of beauty. It's a it was beautiful basketball. And they dismantled every team in their way, every single team in their way. And uh so I do think they they are um underappreciated. I think one of the reasons why they're unappreciated is in 2012 or 13, they made it six classifications, uh -huh. right? And then what happened was most of the team, the better teams from Norfolk, the Peninsula became division five, four and five. And it, and it basically just watered down the competition. And for a while, the Northern region teams were playing each other in the semifinals to get to the state final. So every year we were guaranteed 
a team in the final. So the, our, our teams won so many state titles afterwards because it was kind of set up for us to win. Hayfield was a really historic team the last couple of years. Amazing team. Uh -huh. But Coindexter had to go out and, and schedule teams, you know, for showcases and stuff out of because the tournament was so easy for them. They weren't going to play anybody. And I, I think that's yeah. one of the biggest reasons is because they've watered down the postseason so much now that we don't have to play those teams from Hampton and Norfolk anymore in mm -hmm. Richmond. You hit it on the head, Julian. I'm glad I didn't have to say it. Um, yeah. but no, <laughs> exactly. Real, baby. That's exactly. Crazy. Yeah, That's the, re crazy. the reclassification of divisions is definitely something that I've uh, I found interesting. Um, like you said, it was we had to go through the gauntlet when to get there. Our yeah. team, like you said, you can play a team up here maybe two to three times and end up seeing them in the state tournament, yeah. which is very odd to me. That's I, yeah, crazy. That, that didn't exist when we were playing. That so. makes no sense. But we yeah. we part of the Bay States. Coach Thomas' first year, if it was that way, hey, Coach Thomas would have had it. We're three it, it, wouldn't oh, have we, been district, have... it wouldn't have been district region and state. It would have been district region, state, district region, state, district yeah. region, state. Not for real, bro. <laughs> I'd, have had a, I'd have had a lot of rings. <laughs> you ask me, I'd have had a lot of rings. No, for real. <laughs> well, guys, let, let me ask you this: Did did you guys know about the, the twenty at the time twenty six year drought? Was that something you guys talked yeah. about? I mean, yeah, is, yeah, that, yeah. is that something that yeah. people knew, yeah. or yeah, are you guys just balling, yeah. just trying to beat yeah, whoever's in front of you? It was I, I want to I want, I want speak on that because that drought, you know, uh, I, uh, in 04, 05, our freshman team, we was coached mm -hmm. by Frank Holloway. Rest in peace to him. Yeah, and, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. And he was, uh, put it like this, we was his last freshman team, too, for him to coach mm -hmm. as well. And uh, yeah. he always told us if we stuck together, we would we win the championship. In the barn, <laughs> yeah, he told, he he told he us ran, that. ran in the barn, barn. In the barn yard. We was eighth oh, yeah. and ninth graders when he told us that. Yep. Yeah. And and in three years later, we we got the job done. What's interesting about that is that you know when I took over, uh, that that has been the legend of TC. I believe yeah. Coach Frank had uh, you guys have won JV every freaking year like some 20 years you would win it y'all went undefeated like maybe 15 years right yeah, yeah freshman, mm -hmm. freshman, freshman. Mm -hmm. freshman his freshman the jv team always went undefeated always went undefeated and so when i took over i'm like the talent is being groomed the wrong way <laughs> the <JV laughs> team, i remember like because coach frank and god rest his soul and i get it he tc legend him and I did philosophically disagree because I mm -hmm. kept you. I kept you, Dominique. I kept EJ and mm -hmm. I kept in G. I stole mm -hmm. you. And, mm -hmm. and that was the first year, I'm telling you symbolically, that was the first year that they lost a JV game. Yeah. <laughs> hey, coach, I ain't played JV. No, baby, the dog, the dog. I know. No, I know. Who's... None of you guys. You guys yeah, played in the eighth yeah. grade. Yeah. And he was, that was mad good. that I kept you guys on varsity in the yeah. ninth grade. He wanted to <laughs> he keep needed. repeating. I know, trust yeah. me, I know the story. Because him and I, here. remember, he had to make a choice. <laughs> he was no longer the JV coach, remember? Freshman coach. Yeah. Freshman coach, right? Yeah. yeah. But Freshman that was the problem. You guys were dominating, but you but 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 you weren't <laughs> immersed in the culture yep. early enough. No, nah. because you had so many talented players at TC, so you had to wait your turn. Yeah. But my philosophy mm -hmm. was, <laughs> I wanted to groom you guys from day one, my way, mm -hmm. my way. I didn't want you to have to. So I got rid of some of the. Think about some of the, some of the guys that, you know, could play that didn't play. Yeah, you Dickinson. guys were freshmen. <laughs> They weren't ready for that though, coach. No, they were. They were. They, I'm saying they, and a, a lot of people don't understand that, but they they gotta they gotta understand it. Y'all was good. Don't get me wrong, but y'all really y'all really wasn't ready for what you had in store. It was only a select a few people that had the mindset, that had the skills, had the will that really go through the stuff that we went through. And I see I see cats all the time like, oh yeah, I could play on that team. I could have played on that team. I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody, you, you couldn't have. You know, I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you why. You probably wouldn't have made it past the summer. You feel me? Yeah, the summer. The, people the, ain't summer, the summer, summer would have been your exit. Yeah, it'd have been your exit. 
because it would have been no more of you. It, 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 it was too much for you guys. Like, yeah. I know for a fact that y'all wouldn't people. have been, <laughs> y'all wouldn't have dedicated your, your whole summer to weight vests and tennis balls mm-hmm. and lane slides. You feel me? Like, come on, man. <laughs> we did this like every, it was an everyday thing, <laughs> and the only thing that we had hope was open gym. That was our only hope. Like everybody, yeah, tried, yeah, tried, yeah. Tried, you tell the time, hey, brother, let's just make it the open gym. I said, damn, Travis, I might not make it past and, and today. Kind of okay. <laughs> you see, Coach, he ready for something. Look at him. Yeah. Had his little had his t-shirt tucked in. <laughs> Whistle. I said, Coach, come on, man, not today. Yeah, more Coach first. Tomlin. Coach Thomas definitely changed the culture at TC. Um, we've all, I think TC was always talented, but when he got there and what he established, just like the culture, it was a program. Mm-hmm. And I mean, yeah, it was necessary. I don't think we would have done what we done without him. And I haven't seen another program operate in that manner since he's left. More so, and off so the that, court. So that's made that's kudos to you, Coach. Yeah, 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 like you yeah. said, going from like I've never. High school basketball that. felt like a year-round job. <laughs> Coach Thomas comes to work. Time. Boy, you want a job? You want to work? <laughs> work. Uh-huh. I know you remember that, Coach. Clock in. <laughs> well, we had to clock in to go to practice, man. Listen, <laughs> <laughs> we had to clock this, in. This, this your job, man. Hard has to do Hold up. We that was the job. Still be on. We here. Clock in. You better not be late. Goddamn. You better not be late. But now the piggyback, the piggyback off what Bebe said. I, was, yeah. hey, I had ninety miles. But but the piggyback off what Bebe said, like he, Coach Thomas definitely changed the culture, and you know he he showed us that he cared about us as well. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Well, I want to get to sports and without sports. Well, I want to get sure. to why Coach Thomas came to TC. But what was the culture like? Uh, the Titan culture, like in terms of basketball history. Now, when I was at Robinson in '84, TC had an aura about them. You have to remember. Uh, the western part of the county, there wasn't a lot of African Americans in that part of the county. Uh, South Lakes was just building. Um, you know, there was there was there was a lot of uh, black black players at Mount Vernon, but TC had a a, 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 um, a a mystique about them that everyone was a little intimidated by TC, and it was <laughs> such an honor. It was such an honor mm. for the players to be on the team, and people used to always say TC had ten players in the halls that didn't even play for the team. That could win the regional good. final. That that's how good TC was. My my, my freshman year, uh, Hammond had Frank Smith, who played in the play of Old Dominion in oh, the Hall of Fame, and uh, George Washington had Glenn Williams. I was a point guard. They had Glenn Williams who's in the Hall of Fame for uh for Holy Cross. That's who I had to play. I mean, both teams could kill people. By the time you got there, what was what was the the culture and the history like? Uh, the Titans, did, did everyone want to play for TC Williams basketball? Was it like the yes, yeah. yes, sir? Yes, Listen, yes. it was, it was, yes. it was a lot around the school beat, 20 times for school. trials, <laughs> 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 for trials. Yeah, we had we had kids going from other schools just coming to trial, not even enrolled in the school. <laughs> they wanted to solidify getting on the basketball team first, then we was going to come to the school after that. But listen, like I said. And I will continue to say it, it was tough. From day one, it was no no games being played. It was like we will fight, we will claw, bleed, and everything for first day of trials. Yeah. Then the next day, you will see a, half of that. Then the next day of that, it's ha- like it's just, everybody is just all fizzing out. And we all we already had our team, so we already knew the, the, the trials was practice for us, and the other kids didn't understand it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it's like you guys are in here trying out for the team. We're in here practicing. So it's a totally different mindset that we have from you guys. You laughing and can we get water? And we over here like, <laughs> can you pass us some water? Like we over here doing all the work. <laughs> we over here doing all the work. Yeah. But, yeah, I think growing up in Alexandria for all of us on this call, um being a Titan and playing on Friday night at 7 30, that was the ultimate thing. I mean, that was what we all seen growing up. Friday night in the garden was the place to be. That's yeah. what he wanted to be. Mm-hmm. And, you know, under those bright lights, as Coach Thomas, Coach Thomas called them, them bright lights. Them lights just got real bright. So we had to come to play, and it, it, it was an honor. You know, a lot of us grew up with parents that came through Alexandria and, and went to TC. So 
I wouldn't say, you know, it's like a it's like a legacy type thing. So it definitely was. Um I think the thing that made us that made me uh <laughs> you know, I think take on that challenge or is that I was oblivious to it. I didn't I didn't really buy into it, meaning I saw it, but I didn't know anything about it. And that was what made me an outsider and made me, I only cared about you guys. I didn't care about the rest of what went on before. And I think what happened is what went on before is uh, they were always talented and everybody knew about you know, TC, and they were always just had all these fabulous athletes. And, um, you know, I remember beating y'all. I remember <laughs> beating y'all at Edison with, with non-athletes. And I remember beating y'all. Like, yeah, I, I was just, I was never afraid of the athletes. I just wasn't. Um, because I just thought it was more of, like you said, a status thing to be on the team versus something oh, to... Oh. Yeah, to put in that work. And I remember structure. Yeah, yeah. I remember beating y'all at Edison the the uh the year before I came. And yeah, we should have uh, been about 40. You guys were you guys were talented. Yeah, you guys were I got, I got a story on that too, Coach Time. I'll talk to you about that later. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man, you gotta share that. Huh? Yeah, we, yeah. This was uh this was my freshman year on varsity yet. We was at West Springfield. Mm-hmm. And, uh, Coach, you remember when Kill Day, he was killing Glenn? Kill Day. Something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. From West Springfield. I, yeah, I think was, so. I think we so. We was at West Springfield. Uh-huh. Rest, in, rest in peace to Drew. Julia, his mother was behind him yelling, oh, I want to get him. All he kept doing was looking at me the whole first half, and you did not play me. You told me that we got, we were in the locker room. He said, I don't care about none of those people back there. <laughs> And then you let me play the second half, though, but the whole first half, I never get Miss Gwen kept hollering. Glenn was getting killed, too. She was like, put him in the game. He was like, uh-uh. He just kept looking at me. <laughs> I said, yeah, I like him. I can deal with this. <laughs> I love this. I love this. Listen, <laughs> Straight up. Yeah, they, they rolled me, man. I you, man, I would y'all don't even know the half. I would get phone calls. I would get <laughs> like I'm like, y'all bought up the wrong tree. Listen. I do not care. No, don't care. Don't listen, coach, 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 coach come at halftime. Uh blazer swinging. I don't give a damn about those people. <laughs> that, that's not the words he was using, but listen, so markers yeah, no, everywhere, back, back. clipboards everywhere. I don't give a damn about those people. I'm like, listen, I'm like, we look at that time, like, oh, Lord. I know it was nice, Lord. Damn. You can tell the people, listen, just don't come to the game. Don't, don't say listen, nothing. Just say, oh, don't say nothing. Don't say Y'all make nothing. it worse for us. <laughs> Y'all make it worse for us. This shit. Oh, up. man. Hey, but, Coach, how, Coach how are you accepted? How are you accepted at, at TC? Now, TC is notoriously one of the toughest jobs in the area. Um, <laughs> You know, when I, when, I, when I was there, when I played, they got, they got Mike Heinsohn, who did have the respect of the players in the building. But everyone knew that job was impossible. And <laughs> it just everyone has an opinion in the stands. Um, you know, it's the alumni, the city, people that even go there have an opinion, and they voice those opinions. How, how are you accepted at, at, at TC? I'll let, let them answer some of them. I'll let them answer that. How was I accepted? <laughs> Coach, Coach didn't care. Coach cared about two things: us and winning. Yeah, that's and, it. And 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 that's it. And once once we knew that he was here for the long haul and he really cared for us, we, we, at at a certain point, we ain't even give a damn what the people said. And we from here. I'm like, we gonna ride with our coach because we know our coach gonna ride for us. Yeah. You ain't, you guys ain't coming to pick us up at practice. You ain't taking us out to dinner. You ain't, you ain't instilling how to be a man and how to tie ties and what, buying us blazers. It, nobody in the city is doing this, but this no, man not that's not from here is doing all this for us. So you 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 had to really tread lightly on what you say about our coach around us because some of us, we... No, nah, we ain't going for that, Jack. <laughs> we're, no, not, we're, we're not going to do it. Uh, we're not going to be disrespectful <laughs> because coach always told us 
to be men. But damn, he always told us to stand up for what we believe in, and at that, and still to this day, we still believe in him, and we still not going to say too much I'm about our coach. Yeah, for sure. Me, yeah. No, like, really me, I was man. learning basketball still. I didn't know nothing. Like I don't remember anything. Like I didn't learn anything. I didn't know nothing. Everything was new. <laughs> nah, for real. Boy was, See, I mean, hey, he boy first was, came to Mount Vernon. Terrible man. boy. <laughs> everything was new in my ear, man. Everything was new in my ear. So I was just like willing to do anything he said and everything he said. I remember one game, like I till this day, like it sticks with me now when I when I play against anybody or any do anything. Like I was like, it was a halftime. I was like, George, that man got my heart. He was like, man, you the biggest dude out there. Can't nobody take your heart. You got to go out there and do you. You the man. And those words just stuck with me. And I went out there and I held my ground. And I think we won by like one point. That's that game. It was a big dude, man. Dude, all he had to do was turn around and then he was at the basket. What, uh, Norfolk Collegiate? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah man, your range? exactly. <laughs> oh, yeah. Blue your range? Turn around and he was at the basket. I was like, oh, man, this dude is big. <laughs> On no African strength then. <laughs> no, I was definitely not, you know, I was definitely not accepted uh early yeah. on. Um, but I, I came there for a purpose. I, like I do my best, man. Was my mission and that that, you know, it didn't matter what where I was, my, my purpose was to, you know, teach and guide young men. I just happened to be at a, a at an institution. Um, that had a lot of history and, and it had a lot of uh, passion. And I, and I knew those people in, in their way, that's sports meant so much to TC Williams. It meant everything from the movie. I, I, I understood where it came from. It meant a lot because that's the thing that we, that they held on to, especially in the African American community in terms of being integrated and all that other good stuff. You know, some of this, things you know that happened back then still persisted you know I I remember I don't know if you guys remember I remember when we first EJ you talk about summer league summer I remember we were going to play summer league basketball and I said we're going to play you remember this we were going to play in our uh we're going to play a summer league summer league game and I remember asking you guys to get to St. St. Agnes and I never forget this. You guys was like, "We from the bottom, hobo." It might have been you, yeah, yeah. definitely. <laughs> and, then, from the bottom. and I said, "What is that?" I, he was like, "We the bottom," and I said, "Don't ever say that again." Y'all right. right. <laughs> yeah, Don't you yeah, ever tell bottom. me from the bottom again? <laughs> <laughs> and hobo was like, "Coach, hobo was tough." Now, he, now he, he was like, "I'm just telling you where I'm from, man." Like, like, <laughs> <laughs> but, we know about, I ain't know nothing about no St. Stephen. I knew yeah, about it, but exactly. I wasn't trying to go there. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's what you told me. Go, you don't go on that side of town. I'm like, I was so baffled because St. Stephen's, you got to understand, it was literally two miles from TC. <laughs> literally. And I was just like, and you was like, that's where the white, that, coach, we don't go over there. I was like, <laughs> I don't be over there, champ. I knew right there and there. I was coaching more than I had to. There was a mindset. There was a whole bunch of other stuff that I had to conquer and build, and 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 I'm so glad we did, man. Like, but yeah, it, it's it's a lot of things that people don't understand about the rich history of TC Williams and the athletes, and 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 that's why they were passionate about their football and um, and their basketball and their sports. Because that's the one thing that, that you know that the whole city kind of galvanized around, mm -hmm. uh, and it meant a lot. And but it didn't mean more to to me than you. And I was gonna make sure that you played the game the right way, but also approach life the right way. And that meant mm -hmm. more than anything. And that's uh, why my bad, coach. Go ahead. Go ahead bro. That's why I feel like we are more successful men now outside of basketball because of you. I can honestly say that you taught us from day one how to be men and how to carry ourselves and that was a big pillar in the basketball program and yeah. that's a big pillar to us now still in how we carry ourselves in life. So that's not like a lot of people don't understand what 
the the atmosphere that was inside that locker room from study hall to the closed gyms, like what was being taught to us. It was just not basketball. Yeah. It was it, yeah. it was stuff that we can teach our kids, kids' kids, and we got a blazer and got a jacket that we can pass down from kids to kids to kids. It was is just so much more than basketball that a lot of people didn't understand. And now they see it to this day, like he just wasn't a coach. He was a father figure. Like he was a role model. And he's still here. Yeah. A lot of a lot of people in the city that had coaches, they can't really say like, oh yeah, our coach did this and did that and did that and taught us this and taught us that. They was just basically just more about winning and keeping a persona of winning and being cool with the community. So, yeah, coach. My my goal is on my uh, bathroom mirror right now, written down. Listen, y'all remember that? Y'all I, know y'all remember that fact. Hey, listen, I, no, for real, baby. I, <laughs> told, I, I, told, I, told, I still got my blinders on and everything, baby. I'm fucking with me. Listen, I'll throw my blazer ASAP. You put my blazer at, Mom. Let me get that blazer. Oh, yeah, I'll probably bust out my joint. Right now, right now. Oh, Anthony and uh, and Travis, you were kind of quiet on this one. What, what about you guys? Uh, what, what were your impressions when Coach first came and how he was accepted uh, in the building? Oh, I mean, I, I just feel like the same like everybody's been saying. People didn't really accept him because, first of all, he came from Edison. So, he <laughs> came from Edison, right? <laughs> he, he, mind you, he, he just tried to rub it in before, you know, a little bit that they beat us, right? So, people, the community don't forget stuff like that. So, he came <laughs> over here. But, you know, once once we all got together and got on the same page and understood, like, his intentions and knew, like you said, he was for us and he was about winning, about teaching us how to be men and grow and just be successful. We all locked in and like sometimes we had to tune out the community. We didn't really care what they said. Even when we got into our senior season, I mean, the community was talking all from the last season, the previous season and giving us low expectations and talking trash. And we had to block all that stuff out because we had a mission and he, he made sure that we were successful in that mission. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Right. Travis was a legacy. I think Travis, a lot of your family played for TC. Yeah, yeah a lot of them. Yeah, all of them. All of them. Yes, yeah, so. all of them. Yeah, majority of them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> who, who was that? Hey, Travis. Who, who was your family? Who was your family that played at TC? Uh, Jason Ingram, Don Ingram. Oh yeah. yeah. And my older brother played too. He yeah. played in 06. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. D block. Yeah. D block. It was. I'll tell you a little. Now this is the basketball about this team. So I remember we uh. We 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 got three losses, guys, in Northern Virginia <laughs> competition. Three, three, and that's three. amazing. In three years, we got three losses. It ain't but three teams that can say that they beat y'all. Two of them came from Edison. Hey, coach. When we first get back there, <laughs> like, hold up, the year we win the state title, I remember this. We play Edison. We cruising. We 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 we. They come back and they beat us at their place. Now this is when I gotta make tough decisions. Worst time. And the tough that y'all remember that y'all don't remember that. Yeah, Listen, I, yeah, yeah. Practice. I, don't, I don't even think that y'all realize that after we lost, I just walked off the court. I didn't even get in the uh, handshake line. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just walked off the court and went outside. But mm -hmm. I knew. I said. I, I, we got to make tough decisions. I got to make some tough decisions. And that was the year. Travis didn't like me early. Travis was starting. And oh, yeah. Josh was starting. <laughs> Travis was starting. And Josh was starting. And that's what I said. Ah, uh, nah, 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 nah. We got to make some tough decisions. And that's when I started. Who did I start? I know I shut Josh down for Thomas. Yeah, that's it. You know, oh and then yeah. came the trap coming, the Ryan coming for trap. And yeah. I said, even I said, I, I said, I said, Ryan, yeah, I said, Travis down for Ryan, for Ryan. And then you set me down for like the three games after that. Hey, coach, I ain't <laughs> out of the lie. starting lineup, that, hold up. And then yeah. the rest is history. Mm -hmm. And the rest is history Can't after we made that lineup change. The rest is history. 
Travis would come off the bench. You don't even realize this, Travis. You would get two threes a game, bar none. Two made threes. Easy. 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 Travis. Easy. You can take this one, Travis. <laughs> Some, somebody, somebody said that we were the Golden State before Golden State. Mm -hmm. Think about it. We were shooting mm -hmm. threes before. I was letting y'all shoot threes. Wimbush was shooting threes as the center. Everybody was. Only person that couldn't shoot was Tom. <laughs> yeah, he left. He <laughs> <that> dribble the ball. <laughs> Steve, man, I put that ball on the flow. <laughs> I don't know what you do. <laughs> but that was, that was the, when we lost to Edison, I said, nah, this, this ain't no way. We, we got no business losing to Edison. That was the and worst. We got practice. chewed out, Lord. No, listen, we had we got ready. We got ready for practice after that game. <laughs> and still, still wasn't ready. And still wasn't ready. <laughs> Travis, I said, bro, you already know we about to go do. Travis shook his head, like, bro, we gonna be running the bar, boy. <laughs> hey, Coach Thomas, I don't think we lost to Edison twice, neither. I got, yes, I got you did. Yeah, uh -huh. Let me tell you, I'm his, talking his about my year? three years. You did his first year. My first year, we were up 20, and I told you guys they weren't that you guys weren't traveling. We beat them in the garden. We beat them in the garden. We played them twice that year. We played them twice. Listen, I'm telling you, it's a story. I already got when we the first time we played them, I said, listen, they not gonna stop. They're gonna keep coming. Y'all thought it was a joke. Y'all was up like 15. Boom, boom, boom. They were mad. They just kept coming, kept chopping away, chopping away, chopping away. They beat us in the garden the first year we played them. Mm -hmm. And then that same year, that's when they had the new coach. And he was, I never forget, we we went into, it was time to vote for regional players and all that other stuff. And we had, that was the only game we lost that year. Uh, again, besides losing to, I think that year we lost to Scotty Reynolds. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was the only game we lost. So when we got to time for vote, uh, he was just, he kind of like brushed over you guys in terms of like receiving different things. He was just talking crazy in the meeting. And I, I, I remember uh, Lake Braddock coach, he stood up and was like, listen, TC <laughs> just went undefeated under the first year coach with, with these guys, man, like, it, it, if they don't have this many guys on first team, something is, is ridiculous. And then he was like, well, we beat them. And I remember telling him, I told him, you didn't beat me. The players that was there didn't give in that I coached. And I said, now that these are my guys, <laughs> I guarantee you, <laughs> we will destroy you in the, <laughs> in the region. <laughs> and we did. That first game they came there, I think we beat them by like 20. It would be them like like by like twenty in the regionals, but they're the only. That's your only three losses in Northern yeah. Virginia, twice to Edison, and then the one, Hearn. Yeah. In three years, zone the, that's Northern Virginia competition that 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 was, that's the only team that ever beat us. Well, let's, let's go, guys, to the 2006-2007 team because that team won the regional uh, uh, championship as well, and it had to be a good team because. I don't think any of you started on that team. I, I, I went to an old program, and I, I had written down the starters. It was Kamel uh, Tunnell, Glenn Andrews, Mike Davis, Walter <laughs> Smith, and Kevin Collier. So uh, if mm -hmm. that team must have been an amazing team. Yeah. On paper. On you paper. guys were smart on that team. <laughs> Definitely on paper. We used to, to smack on the boys in practice. <laughs> smack them on practice, man. Yo, we never lost. No, definitely. that was a good team too. That was a good team. It was, it was a very a talented team. team. A very, very, very talented, talented team. D one players on that team. Yep, Mike. Davis. Honestly, honestly, I thought that was gonna be our at least my first state championship. I was, I was, I was kind of yeah. counting that one in hand already. Mm -hmm. That was already my fault. <laughs> that was my fault. <laughs> well, you only lost three games. You lost to Towson Catholic. You lost to Riverdale. You lost to Tri City. I think that must have been like a tournament or something. And then you end up losing big to Freedom. Mm -hmm in the first round of state. So, I mean, you were undefeated in the area. So mm -hmm. you, you must have been riding pretty high that year. Yeah, that was, that was, we were talented. I mean, we lost to Cam Long. Um, we weren't, we just weren't bought in like this group was. That, that, <laughs> Eagles. I want to pick much. back off what Coach Thomas said too, because that year I ain't had a grade, but that team. I ain't had a grade either. That team had a lot of the, uh, the, the old Alexander mentality. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. As far yeah. as like everybody, everybody wanted For to self. be the man, not doing mm-hmm. their job. Uh-huh. Like, er, like, uh, like a lot yeah. of that team, I don't even think they even a lot of them even speak to each other. To be honest. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So yeah, like this team, this team that won it, it was definitely more of a brotherhood. Like we all played basketball together. Well, when all they, when we played against each other, too. rec league. We played like Bobby A U together, yeah. Virginia Pride, out of the Rising Stars. We all went yeah. together. The chemistry like, was there from pups. Mm. Everybody knew their role. Yeah, and Travis gonna shoot it. <laughs> they was going Everybody bring it accepted up. their role. Yeah, that's what it is. Everybody knew and said, I knew I was going to grab them boards. But I think that loss definitely fueled us even more to win in 08. Because I mean, I remember when we lost and the season was over, I think the core group that was coming back got together and we we said, Yeah, this we don't want this feeling that we had in that locker room. That lot of you can hear a pin drop in that locker room. Mm -hmm. Because, like I said, the expectation was we were going to Richmond. (laughs) <laughs> I mean, you had Mike Davis, Glenn Andrews on the same team. You know, Trav and EJ and Man were playing uh, big roles for that team. We were – that team was more talented than us individually. But exactly. as far as collective unit, they couldn't do it. They couldn't do anything with us. And Coach coach might talk about that, you know, because we started uh, yeah. throwing an open gym after that and them boys were still coming there. And then that returning group we had for 08, and coach, I think Coach started saying <laughs> <laughs> we, should put it, we should put it on them. Yeah. No, it right. this this group here was just something they it's like the beginning culture. That was year one. They didn't really understood everything. They bought into it. Um Mar- Marcus Lemon was a big part of that. I remember when I took over the program, Marcus just said, Coach, all I want to do is beat Lake Braddock. TC Williams hadn't beat Lake Braddock in like four years. Hmm. I just couldn't understand that. <laughs> and, and like, I, I had never lost to Lake Braddock when I was at Edison. I couldn't understand that. But it, to, it told me one thing. It was a discipline thing. Because in order to beat Lake Braddock and Brian Meeks, you had to be disciplined. His team at Lake Braddock was always back cutting Princeton offense. Boom, 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 boom. And with no shot clock, you had to be disciplined. Good boy. Mm-hmm. He oh, held the ball on that. 26 to 20. 26 to 20. It's crazy. I just, I just it, talked to yeah. somebody about that too, like like last week. I'm like, Coach always told us we're going left and we got five stops. The first five stops, we got to stop them. Damn near every time. And you know, we got to score every time down before they start holding the ball. <laughs> <laughs> like, listen. Yeah. And then it just became a mystique thing. When we yeah. were rolling there, after Very. year one, and you got to give those guys credit too, even though you know this was the team that bought in, they they established the culture. This is what I would say: Marcus and them group kind of established the culture, right? Mm-hmm. And then the year two, they kind of bought into the culture. Year two, a little bit, right? And that's when we made our run and boom, 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 and the mystique started. And then your group defended the culture. It was like when you guys walked into the gym, y'all knew, especially Northern Virginia, it's like, oh, nobody's beating us. Mm-hmm. Nobody in this area is beating us. Like, we come in here, <laughs> we're more, we're tougher, we're, we're, we're more disciplined, and we love each other. So it's just nobody in Northern Virginia was going to beat us. And so, you know, they defended the culture. Mm-hmm. And then they're right. I knew I had a special group when I would watch the them when they would come back. Even Ryan Burke and all those guys, they would come back and EJ and and, and Man and Travis and them would just it just dismantle them over the over the long run of the game. You know, it would just be like they just knew how to play the game and they 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 played it together at a high level. Um, but from a talent point of view, yeah, them, them other teams might have had individual talent, but no, no, no group function like 2008 group. How did they accept it? How did the 07 group accept the success of the 08 group? Was there ever any, was they, there ever any they tension involved? They, they, they didn't like it at all. 
Say they it again, like, man. Say it again, man. They still so talk about still it to this, this day. day. <laughs> Yeah, we, we're still we're still playing games and, and alumni games yeah. to, to do yeah. that just to, just to uh-huh. prove a point. <laughs> to whoop up on them. <laughs> they were sick. I hit the two threes up TC in that alumni game. <laughs> oh man! But I think it was just that they that they wanted to accomplish the same thing because Coach Thomas always said, "What well, short term, intermediate, and long term go? Win the district, then region, then state." Like, like you said, I think Trav spoke about it a little earlier. Coming in the 08, nobody expected anything of us except for us. 07, 08, everybody was ready to go to Richmond. Oh, we got the, you know, you got, oh, you got Mike Davis over here. You got Glenn Andrews. You got Walt. You got Birch. You got this, the third. Then you got, you know, the guys that won. And you got, you got oh, EJ playing a role. role. Trav playing a role. And man playing a role. The guy, in my mind, I'm looking at it too. Like, why? Where's my other ring? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so, um, I just think the expectations are a little different. And I think, even talking to some of those guys, sometimes they, especially early on, they were they were really envious of it. Um, but I think you just gotta understand it. <laughs> yeah. I learned a lot from that year, though. Yeah. Uh, what I learned too is that the competition that I had you guys playing against wasn't uh, wasn't wasn't going to prepare you for what you were going against, like. The seven five seven was loaded. They like like that's back in the the prime. It was loaded. That was the the the, the stomping grounds for a lot of Division one coaches. They weren't recruiting uh, other not out of public schools. Now they were going to these private schools recruiting, but that's where a lot of the Division one guys were recruiting from was from that area. So and in that area, that talent went to public high school. They did not go to DeMatha, O'Connell. So the talent in that area stayed at their public high school. So my mindset that year was to make 2018 play one of the toughest schedules ever. We played <clears throat> Montrose Christian, took him to double overtime. EJ hit the shot at half court. Mm-hmm. Remember that? Yeah. We supposed to win that game. And they robbed man for that and won to win the game. We, play, we went and played Ed Davis. Remember mm-hmm. your shoe pop, man? <laughs> play the game. Play the game. We went and played Ed Davis. Now, these teams that we played collectively, Ed Davis had a 14-year career in the NBA. Mm-hmm. Uh, 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 Montrose Christian had two guys going to Duke. Two uh, guys who played in the NBA. Me. And it was one more team that we went and played that we lost. I can't remember. Uh-huh. I cannot remember. You brought no, North, yeah, you brought Norfolk Collegiate up uh-huh. here, but we ain't lose to them. We beat yeah, them. Yeah, we didn't there. we didn't yeah. lose. Oh yeah, they yeah we didn't lose to them. They, that's when mm-hmm. they had they oh, had was it Dante something. something. Dante yeah, something. Was, what boy name? It was another team. I can't I can't remember. But having said all that, which was it? Wise was it? Wise that you were talking about? Did we lose? No, we beat Wise. You beat Wise. You beat Wise. Beat wise. Beat wise. Beat wise. Beat wise. They, it was a tough game. Coaches, we it was just them two and Edison. We only lost three games. Yeah, you lost Edison. We lost Edison. Yes. So Montrose Christian and then um, um, Ed, Davis. Ed, Ed Davis. Correct. So after that, I remember the road to the to to, to going to, to states. And I uh, and this, this is when I knew we were we were we 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 were we were we had hit our hit our stride. Is when we, uh, I think that's the year. That's the year I had pneumonia. Yeah, Y'all remember that? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And I and I missed the first two games. I was in the hospital. I was it was in the terrible. Hospital. <laughs> it was what's terrible funny, guys. Ball. I just because I, I what's funny is I just got that fixed. December twenty fifth, I had coach had lung surgery. I just cut it out. Mm. Oh, that's just just yeah. a month ago. That's crazy. Oh, wow. So I remember being in the hospital and, <laughs> and my my wife, Doc, at the time said, listen, you got to stay for at least two days and then I, I, I'll sign you out myself. I said, I'm only staying two days and then I got to go because we got a mission. So I remember when I got back, Coach Jones was like, uh, man, they had a look in their eyes because you weren't here. And then when I got back, I think we came back and we played Lake Braddock, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The district title. 
Was it? Yeah, the semis. I think semis. we played semis. 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 Who was it? Am was I? it Lee or uh, Hayfield? We played in the district title. Was it? Andy? No, we played West Coast. We played West Coast. In the district. Was it West Coast? We it was West, West Springfield Coast? first. Mm. What was Springfield the and West County? I mean, South Springfield, South County, and then Lake Braddock. Right, Lake Braddock for the title game. I came back okay. for the title game. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah, okay, yeah. I played Lake Braddock in semis. That was that. No, that I was came at back the for the semis. You're right. Was it at the came crib? back for the semis? I missed one game. It was at Lake Braddock. Like and, yeah. That's and when they held the ball the entire game. game. Yeah, Coach Jones told me, I, "I won't, I don't, I won't forget this." Coach Jones says, "This team missed you, and once when they see you, they will coach themselves all the way to the title." Mm -hmm. And when I got there, I Man. knew I saw this look in your eyes that was like, I was like, "Oh, this this is about to be it." <laughs> Damn, this man. is about to be it. <laughs> and then when we went through region, I think, what was the regional schools? We destroyed everybody in the region. It wasn't yeah. even close. Yeah, because I ain't never played Langley. We threw, they was tough, but we ran them out the gym. Yeah, like, out the, it, out the yeah. parking lot. Yeah. Yeah. It was just the goals, man. The goals yeah. the we ran the back with all the parking lot. Like, listen. Everybody played in the that regional move. championship. Everybody. Yo, everybody started that season, bro. Everybody yeah, yeah, everybody yeah. started too. Do you think by the end of the season? Started. By the end of the season, everybody started. Do you think by the end of the season, you guys would have beaten Benedictine and Montrose if you guys could could have played them again? Yeah, if we yeah. played if we played them again, we'd have beat both. Of them. We'd have definitely yeah. beat Montrose. We, we Montrose we, for sure. Montrose for sure. Uh, uh, it would have been a closer game against Benedictine. Yeah. But Montrose for sure. What? But, hey, Coach uh, Thomas, what Ed Davis have? And then had a 30, 20, and double on me, man. Triple double. Because <laughs> Drupal double, 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 double with 10 blocks. Oh, my God. God. But hold on. It was, it was Coach's fault, though, to begin with. Y'all <laughs> Coach was over there talking trash to him before the game. Got <laughs> yeah, like, that like, was like, 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 you we on the court with him. You over there trying to make him mad. <laughs> I, it was, it was strategic <laughs> because I knew hey, Ed Davis – well, you would you weren't gonna face another Ed Davis. Now let me ask you this: When you went against the big boy from Kings Fort, Thomas, was he an Ed Davis? No, 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 no. no, no, no. He was no boy near. from Petersburg, an Ed Davis. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> it wasn't even, the big even boy the... from Bethel, an Ed Davis. No, 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 no. no. Okay, no sir. Ed Davis was just so skilled, man. He was different. No, he was that man was a demon. He oh, was you play, he you get play him on them blocks, man, in the in there. <laughs> no, you you gave him the block. <laughs> nah, he was just sitting on me in another way. <laughs> that boy so guys, good. I was gonna say when you play Kings Fork in the state quarterfinals, now the year before, you guys are rolled through northern region, no problem, and you get to this you get blown out by by freedom by 20. So what was what was the mindset going in? I mean, were you guys dialed in like you know, we're, we're going after Kings Fork? We got these guys. I mean. Did, I mean, was it as easy as it looked on paper, or I we, mean, was there some doubt going into the game? No yeah, doubt, never. We was no doubt. doubt on our end. We were just whooping no people. It was just like we had the swagger. Like it's like we had a we don't care who we, we play. Like, others want to live like others we, can. We could have beat well, the wizard. Other point, point, point. <laughs> the, the, the world doubt is. I'm gonna say that. Yeah, I remember. So I remember driving. for a fact, right? Yep. Because That's after the fact. game, I remember for a fact after the game. We won. We we beat him by twenty. Me and yeah. Coach Thomas. We said it to Coach Thomas. We said it. So he came up. He was like, "Yeah, they say we were supposed to lose by 20. Yeah. And we was like, "Yeah, yeah. they changed the tables, didn't it? Because yeah, everybody they did. was saying we was gonna get blown out. Oh, by see, twenty they facing the eastern region. The they team. facing these other regions. That this ain't yeah. the northern region. They gonna get whooped. And we 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 knew we was locked in, like everybody was saying. Mm -hmm. But everybody else expected us to lose and get blown I'm, out. I'm from that area. That's all they said. It was like, no way y'all going to be King. They thought the title was going to be Kings Fort and Bethel was playing for the title. Mm -hmm. That's what they all automatically penciled in. Kings Fort. Because they had the two best teams in the state, they thought. Kings Fort with four Division One guys, and blah, blah, blah on each team, per team. They they gave us no shot to win that game. Nobody gave us no sh any shot to win that game. Nobody. This is Disrespectful. It, nobody so we, gave us a shot. And so let me tell you we this. We were prepared, though, too. We knew we was prepared for that whole run. Yeah. Practice. No doubt. See, I, well, everybody know practice, our practice was serious, man. We man, played again, and then everybody stayed after. Mm -hmm. I used to play one on one with Ryan after every practice. While we Real get, Travis on the gun. 
Mm-hmm. He was prepared, man. We were so we get so mad at Coach if he wouldn't let us comp be be physical with each other. <laughs> so if we had like a little shooting practice, like I couldn't like talk shit to Travis or I couldn't push Travis or just do crazy stuff and like uh the T or just we would get mad. I'm like, Coach, why are we doing this? Like I don't I don't wanna do this. Like I didn't come to practice today to do this. Like I'm trying to get at somebody today. Yeah, NBA about, no baby. So we gonna man. we gonna do a little shoot drills over here, dribble right here. I'm like, nah, coach. We're gonna put this five on five. We're gonna <laughs> jump ball and we're gonna get at it. Like, let's get to this. But well, we got a game tomorrow. And what that mean? I, yeah, I think that game go. was probably I'm sorry, go ahead, EJ. My bad, brother. No, you good, you good, bro. Go ahead. I said I think that game, that game at Robinson, and I'm sure the rest of the fellas can uh, probably chime in on this, but I think that was probably our biggest mental hurdle for that season. You're mm-hmm. going right back to the place where you had lost the year before. So, at least for me, those feelings of that being in that locker room started to, that locker room that we talked about earlier, and you hearing the pin drop. Yeah. I'm like, oh, we just we lost here. And like I said, nobody gives us giving us a chance outside of us. But like I said, Coach Thomas is one of the is probably is the most prepared coach I've ever had. So we went in that game. My mama. Playing, we played a triangle in two. <laughs> Brian, Brian, you got works, baby. You got Parker. <laughs> nah, for you know, real, yeah. Triangle in two defense. I'm sitting there like triangle in. Th- I'm like, what? <laughs> He's like, yeah, what you is got it? him? Brian got him. <laughs> and like, yeah, and, and after that, it was history. I think, fellas, was that also the the same game? Coach Thomas played that uh, motivational uh, video with the lines. And telling us that yeah, we lines right. and we going out here and we going yeah. hunting. And have Babbas yeah. have crying in the locker room. I wasn't yeah, ready yeah. to play. I like Coach. Yeah. <laughs> I'm ready to go do something for somebody else. Like I'm ready to go do something totally different than play basketball. How you got me right now? Like, hey, go hey, to war right now. You, it, it was a, a mental <laughs> test because they jumped on us too now. Yeah, they did. Remember, like we, I think we got down like maybe nine zero. Or was that the championship game? No, no. Well, championship, was, uh, you, guys were, you guys went way up right away. Yeah. Well, one of them, one of those games, we, we it was like nine. The semi. That was Petersburg the semi, coach. Out. Yeah, that was mm-hmm. the semi. Oh, oh, Peter. That was Peter. Oh, Petersburg. yes, it was Peter. Hey, Travis, Travis, you remember the dude in the stands like, oh, y'all play them boys? Oh, yeah, y'all gonna lose to them boys. <laughs> like, All right, yeah, we're gonna try. <laughs> right, we'll see. We'll see you after the game. So, <laughs> so right there, you better not move. I remember, I remember <laughs> after we beat Kings Fork. So, this is how I knew, like, they, they thought we were a joke. So I remember the coach, and I'm going to leave his name out because I, I know him. He called me from Bethel, and he was like, hey, um, yo, just uh, will you give me the tape of, of you you guys and Kings Four? So uh, no, 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 no. That was before we played Kings Four. Will you give me the, the tape of who else advanced to that? Oh, uh, it was it was Langley. John Marshall, John Langley, Marshall, Langley. Peter who, Langley, Langley. Oh, there Langley. you go. Yeah. He said, the, the coach from Bethel said, "Will you give me your tape of Langley? Um, you know, uh, you know, as a formality, you know, give me your <laughs> tape of Langley." And I said, "Uh, yeah, you give me your tape of you and Kings Four. And he said. Well, I made an agreement with the Kings Fork coach that I wouldn't give you the tape, hmm. that we wouldn't give the tapes. Here's why. Like, like, listen, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm smart enough to read through it. They basically already pinned in that it was going to be them and Bethel and Kings Fork in the state championship. And I said that that's that's basically why he didn't want to give me the tape. So I said, nah, you know what? I'm good because I. I I had my own strategic way of scouting anyway. So I said, I'm good. I, I don't need to share the tape. And he said something to me. He was like, well, you know, well, best of luck. You know what I mean? I hope you come down and watch us play. <laughs> I said, yeah, okay. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I knew, I knew right there, right what time it was. And I, <laughs> when we played Kings four and we beat them by 15, I said, you guys in trouble. And then I coached some of them guys on Boo Williams' team. And this is how, when we went to Petersburg, I do remember that too. We got down early. And I do remember them, the fans like overrated. They were saying something like something. I don't know. 
And I was just calm because I knew like my guys hadn't played in that arena. And every time we would make a sub, I did I wouldn't miss a beat. I think Travis came off the bench and hit like two threes back to back to back. Bronco, Bronco. EJ, you know, we put that pressure on them teams. And man, they folded. They folded. And we were up That's 15 right. points. It, it was crazy. Yeah. It was crazy. It, it was the Philly was a draw too, man. We we, we we had the best. Remember that got kicked out. Too. Remember that got kicked out of the championship game because Ryan Neeson flipped over yeah. flipped the whole court. <laughs> and so, and then this is when I knew we were going to win the state title. It was the night before we were in a hotel. I think we had just came back from dinner or something, right? Yeah. And you remember Bethel was downstairs. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And they were just talking all types of trash, like it's a formality. You <laughs> boys ain't played nobody. You boys are Sunday. Hey, Coach Tom, and they was calling me by they were calling me by my name because I coached them on Boo Williams team. Mm-hmm. And I would see EJ and I would see their faces like he ain't y'all, excuse my language, like effing coach. He our oh, coach, like, and they was like, Coach Thomas, we about to blow y'all out. And I was like, they don't know what they just did. They don't know what they, they had shirts made and everything. everything. You remember that? Yeah, they had shirts. They yeah. were showing our parents. All our parents came up to us. They were like, they were showing the state championship shirt. Yeah, they <laughs> had like, shirts. I guess they got those. Yeah. Made already. Yeah. <laughs> what, what did Kings, what, how did Kings Freddy. Fork accept the fact that you guys beat them so badly? Was it were they was it getting a little bit chippy on the court, or were they were they good sports uh-huh. about it? I, I, what was the mood on the Body. court? They, they, they bowed out great. The they bowed down. They took it on the chin. Yeah, I think it was more like league. shock, if anything. I think it was shock, like, what is going on here? This, yeah, is, not the, this is not the script. Yeah. This is Wait, not yeah, how this was supposed way. to go. Thanks for had that big dude, too. Like, I don't oh, think God, I don't think Travis, good. Man, or EJ missed no shots. On defense, they were stifled. It was just like, yeah. Yeah, yeah go chime in, man. <laughs> <laughs> and then you, I would play Man sometimes at the point. They had no matchup for that. No one, no, no, no one had a matchup for, for his versatility. Uh, where, and what's funny is I remember when it, when I first started coaching him, he used to get the rebound and always outlet it, and I used to <laughs> yell at his, bring the ball up the court, <laughs> 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 and they had no matchup for for him. They had no no one had a matchup for man. No one no. had a matchup for him. And well, you guys, you guys beat Kings Fork, and then now, now the tension has got to be rising because you're getting ready to go to Final Four, and now all of a sudden, are people beginning to talk about this is the year we're going to do it? Uh, I mean, was, nah. was, what was what was the move going into the Petersburg game? Everybody going out there thinking we're going to lose the whole city. Yeah, everybody, y'all not going to beat them until they until they see it halftime of the Buffalo game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Rasul <laughs> Butler, that's what they saying. Y'all going, y'all will be back. Nobody believed in that they were going to win this, but these guys on this call and the rest of them guys in that locker room and that coaching staff. Mm. No, they did. No one thought we would beat Kings Fort. First of all, no one thought we would beat Petersburg. Rasul Butler, uh, uh, they had a young. Frank Mason. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They had a young Frank Mason. That's what everybody was talking about. Uh, um, the, the great Ty White was an assistant on that team. Ty White basketball yeah. program that's at George. Where's Ty at now? Uh, John Marshall. John Marshall. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, now, no, nobody gave, nobody thought that we would win that but these guys on this call. And to answer your question, Nobody got chippy when after my boys finished putting the because they were all in <laughs> shock. They just let me tell you, the game was over after halftime at all these games. They were just shocked. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. They were all every one of their teams were shocked. Even Bethel. The game was over at Bethel after the first six minutes. Now, coach, I remember. I remember Anthony coming out, and I was watching. I didn't come down for that game for some reason, but I was watching it on TV. It, it was televised. I remember Anthony came, and my recollection was he had two or three 
three pointers like in the first three or four minutes. Yeah, and I was, was like, man, this is gonna be this is gonna be easy tonight. <laughs> yeah, it, look, I remember hearing the chant. Hit it at the buzzer on halftime <laughs> before before the game is. They were saying overrated, and so I will say this: the TC, what what did we call them? The Fighting Titans. They traveled mm -hmm. right, yeah. and they were chanting. And I remember the, the one of the chants. One was like. Uh, uh, what did they say? You don't. Y'all need Iverson. Y'all need Iverson. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all need Iverson, and they were just chanting back and forth before the game. And let me tell you, first six minutes in the game, that game was over. They were oh. shocked, and they weren't even shocked about the offense. They couldn't get the ball that, up the floor on our defense. Full. I mean, man, press. they could not get the ball up the floor on our defense. Yeah. <laughs> they were struggling to get the ball press they half court. Press. These Quite. Division One guys. Yeah. yeah. The, it, in, there was no momentum in the game. I mean, I remember basketball is a game of momentum and runs. So you're waiting for them to get a run at some point, you know, get under 10 and put a little pressure on you guys. There was there was no momentum that whole game at all. It wasn't just that game. It was every it was every yeah. game to that to that route to that championship game. It was every game. That's how we did. They dismantled every team they played on that run. That's why I say it's the and, and they are ten points a quarter. Ten points a quarter. Some of the best teams in the state that year. Any of those teams could have. You put them in any other era, they would have they, they, they would have won the, the state title. Yeah. It was very yeah. special. Special team, special group. Yeah. Special, so what did so it feel like, guys, when the when the uh horn blew in the 27-year drought? I'm not even sure that was on your mind, but it was on my mind. Yeah. I remember mm -hmm. I was in my house just celebrating, running around the kitchen. But what what, what what did it feel like? It must have been just an amazing feeling. It was better when I got home because I realized that my father watched the game. And I was just like, oh, uh, man, that's what's up. I just played on TV. And as an having an African parent, never saw me play until this day. He's never seen me play. But somebody had called him like, yo, your son is on TV. <laughs> and that's when he saw that. And I remember when I was in Woodbridge, I lost all my games. It was like 0 and 8 playing JV. So every time I came home, he was like, I lost, I lost. So he never got the spirit to go watch a game, ever. Mm -hmm. So me winning that championship on TV, man, greatest moment of my life. Yeah. Grateful. Yeah. Grateful to That's be part of that experience. Of was that, that was that Dominic? For the city. It, that was definitely uh, one of my best moments of my life, winning that state championship. It was sure. like, uh, after we won that, it was like, I told you so. <laughs> Yeah. For me, you know what I'm saying? Cause I, I hear everything in the city. Y'all ladies, we yeah, I hear I hear everything. So it was like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I told you so. I called all my friends around the state, high school basketball friends. We were so proud because the Northern Region team had finally did it. They said we weren't good enough. You guys are you guys are soft in Northern Virginia. Mm -hmm. I said we were we were we weren't soft tonight. So <laughs> <laughs> Hey EJ, yeah. do you remember that pregame talk? Yeah, me, me and Travis cried. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, everybody. You know, me, nah, you know, we real. Around, <laughs> I was, I was, was every the team and, and say the I was quick to cry anytime. I ain't gonna yeah. lie. <laughs> what was that pregame talk? Well, we yeah. went around the room. Everybody yeah. in the locker room. And, yeah, and you you told everybody. The article yeah. was the paper, right? They, yeah. Yeah. Well, I, was they could do. I was, yeah, everything. It was like, it was like, it was like test day. Like this is the test day, and we you you studied us and you learned us from day one, and to hear like you tell each and every one of us anything, something that we that we overcome overcame, mm -hmm. something that that we worked towards, <laughs> something that you've seen in us, like. And, and it's like all of us in the room, and you know every every word to say to one of us to make us just like run through the wall, and we'll be fine with it. Running through the wall, getting up, running through the wall, getting up, running through the wall, and we was fine with that. So when you did that, I was like, you know what? I, I already know. Like 
it's up for me. Like I started crying when you started talking about the first person. Like I was already balling. I'm like, man, how did this man know everything about every single one of us? Even the trainers. He was talking to the trainers. I'm like, they don't even play basketball. They just mm-hmm. give us more than their dogs. Like, and you know them like, like it's like family at this moment. And we never had that coming from the city because it's always divided. There's always this person, this, this. It's never like uh, togetherness. And for you to do that, it's like, bro, there's it's no way we're going to lose this game. There's no way. Like, we about to come out here and smack these boys. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna go it's back home and key, man. have a steak dinner. Yeah. That, was, was that was always the goal, though. Was to win our last game. Yeah, yeah, every, yeah. That was, every, that, was that, was the, that was the goal. Win the last game you played. Yeah, man. But it's it's everybody's goal. But it's hard to actually do that. Yeah, but I, I, that, was, <laughs> that, that was a goal from. Well, it was first never a hard practice. goal in my mind. Yeah, win our last game and we did it. You you I came did. on. And you said this team made an unbreakable run. Is that no, is that what you said when you came first came on mm-hmm. about this two thousand? Oh yeah, absolutely. I you mean, it was it, it it was something that uh, it, I don't know if it, we felt like it was a jinx or we we, we really you weren't good. It? Our basketball wasn't good enough. But if you look at some of the rosters and all mm-hmm. the Division One players that have come from Northern mm-hmm. Virginia. I mean, oh, it didn't make any sense. So but it's you funny guys you did something. I don't analogy. think um, people realize what, what a big um, mountain you guys climbed. Uh, we, we weren't even close to winning a state championship. It, yeah. most, most years, we weren't even close. And when you when you guys did it so dis- decisively, it made basketball fans like me, it made us all so proud. I mean, I played against Tyrone Shaw, Glenn Wing. I played against great Titan teams. I played against great you know, Mount Vernon teams. And for you guys to carry on our tradition, it, it meant a lot to a lot of people. I mean, we were, I mean, we were all so happy. All the basket officers and official at the time, we were also just happy, and uh, you just made us all so proud. You used the word unbreakable, but that's 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 who we were. Yeah, that's what we talked about. <laughs> yeah. So without you even knowing what went on in our locker room, that that was our that was, that was always it. our mantra. Uh, we yeah. we were unbreakable, like, yeah. and 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 I I would tell those guys, I ain't promising you we are gonna go undefeated, but I promise you you are gonna be unbreakable. Yeah, nothing was gonna break us. And so when you use that to start this, that's just let me know like this this <laughs> you don't even know what you did. You use the term unbreakable. That's was every day in our locker room. That's what we talked yeah. about. We weren't going to break, no matter what. No matter what the community, no matter what the fans, no matter what obstacles they got in their life, you were not going to break. And no. we didn't. We won it all. Was it was there anything about the reception that surprised you afterwards? So you come back and you got to be conquering heroes. Uh, was there anything that surprised you about the reception? I mean, was it was it all joy? Was was there, was there some jealousy? Uh, what, what was the reception? Uh, bandwagons. Well, I was about to say, we, had, we had more fans when we came back. We had we had a lot of bandwagons. Oh, you believe it? It's now, huh? The, the product is, is already over. You you want to buy now, huh? No, we good. Yeah, they love Coach Thomas after that, but they hated me before. I'm yeah. telling you. <laughs> yeah, they did. And then I think the biggest thing was I vanished. I left. Yeah. Well, guys, yeah. let's let's talk about that now. Now the now the juniors on that team, uh, Javanta, uh, EJ, um, and uh, and Dominique. Uh, mm-hmm. How did you feel? It must have been devastating to you when Coach. Maybe it was a senior though. What's that? Yeah, baby, yeah, baby, the only other only junior was uh, it was G, Gavin, and Marcus. Okay, yeah. so but but it must have been a devastating feeling when I mean obviously Coach has got to. Do what's right for him and his family, but it must have been yeah. devastating when you heard the coach was gonna was gonna move down to Kekatan. Yeah, yeah. Well, for me, because Coach Thomas kept me on a straight and narrow. Like I said, it's more than basketball. So, mm-hmm. uh, like I ain't gonna say I was devastated, but then I know he had a family that he had to you know take care of all that, and I understood that part. So I was I was happy for him as well. But at the beginning, when I first heard it, it was like, ah, 
am I am I am I even gonna keep my head on straight to play next year? But you guys, not only did you play, you had a fantastic year. You but, won the you know, region I, again. I still I still go by a lot of his teachings right now. I was huh? hurt. Yeah. Yeah, I was about to say I was hurt, I hurt. You were you were hurt. Was, you were, you were graduating, was, right, EJ? Are you I was it, I, it it wasn't about graduating, but it wasn't about none of that. Because I was like, I'm coach's son, and everybody yeah, knows that. that. Was my <laughs> yeah, that was my dad. Yeah, listen, yeah. I I slept in Coach bed at his mother house. <laughs> like, so so you 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 know the vibe. Like his son is my little brother. His daughter is my little sister. Like yeah, yeah. we fell asleep on the couch watching movies. So it was like, like I said, like I told you, Coach Thomas to me is. It is is more than a coach. Like that's my dad. Like that's my father. Coming from not having a dad to him just embracing me as a son and bringing me to where he grew up around his mother. His my, mom cooked me breakfast. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Like so you can see you can see how how deep it it goes with myself and my brothers. The relationship that we have with our coach is is totally different. The dynamics yeah. is not just a coach. I don't even call him. I, I call him pops. Like at, at the certain power, people would be in the stand saying, "What? That's your dad?" Like, yeah, yeah, that's my that's my pops. You feel me? Coming to get me, making sure I'm good on my birthdays. Coming, to making sure I'm I ate. Like it's, it was just more to basketball, and to hear him like say, "Oh yeah, I'm not gonna be here your senior year." It was heartbreaking for me, but I also knew in the background what was already transpiring. Like mm -hmm. I know his, my, my mother was going to be a, a, going to a better job and I already knew this because I, I didn't heard the conversations before. I just didn't know when, but I already knew what it was. But I, I was always happy. I was always grateful to even just be in that light and be a part of that family. So it was like, it was kind of hurting, but I was like, I know it's, it's for a better and I can always call my coach. Whenever he can be wherever he at, he gonna pick up. He gonna make sure I'm I'm, I'm good. So it was it was always good. Yeah. So. Yeah. I, I, I received them. I I left. I didn't go to Kickatan. That's that's. I I ended up coaching at Kickatan. I left yeah. for uh, my family. Like my my mm -hmm. wife had a opportunity to start her practice. Mm -hmm. yeah. She finished John Hopkins here. And she had an opportunity um, uh, to start a practice down there near my mother and father mm -hmm. and my kids. And they, they, they'll, they'll tell you, I spent most of my time at TC. I would jump on the highway and go home where, you know, the hustling uh, of, of, of everyday life <laughs> and, and, and the kids and traffic. And so uh, I, I, I made it, we made a decision that, you know, she, she, she started a practice down there and uh, they can see both sides of the grandparents. And that was, it was a really tough decision. It was a really hard decision to lead them because uh, it, it was really hard. I really thought we, we, we would win it again. I was, I was locked in to win it again. And so when we moved down there, I, um, I was, I was employed to come coach Kickatan. Um, they was like, come, come coach Kickatan. Um, and I hadn't thought about it, but it, it was eerily the same situation. They had a couple of two really good young players, um, Rodney Bullock and Josh Fortune, which um, we never, we never got back to uh, uh, like TC. It was just never the same, but I turned that program around. We turned that program around too. And then in the rest is history, that probably led me to college coaching. It definitely, you know, uh, because uh, when that happened, I was down there at Kickatan. Um, that's when I met my boss. Now he he walked in my gym, and 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 the first thing he said is, <laughs> I, "I listened to you guys talk about my practice habits." <laughs> and so he walked in my gym, and he saw my guys doing the same thing that I had you guys doing. He was like, "Dude, you belong in college coaching." The way you play, you. I want to. That's hire what you was teaching us, and you said it. Yeah, yeah. And he said, "I want to hire you," and I hadn't thought about it until that moment. And then that's that's how I ended up at Providence. To be honest, so, hey, Coach, was yeah. was what was the transition back to Kekatan? Did you uh, was it much different? 
go now you're back you're back home near home you're back on the mm -hmm. peninsula mm -hmm. um did, did you enjoy uh coaching down there or did you miss coaching in, in northern virginia uh i i missed tc mm -hmm. i i missed my guys i missed these guys on that phone i missed the 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 the, the, the culture that we were building um mm -hmm. that that we had to break through um i i, I yes i miss i miss that um down there i'm from there so i knew what it was about like uh in northern virginia there there's a lot of things that people can go to you got the wizards game you got uh you got commanders football ravens Smithsonian. city and and down there, high school basketball was high school basketball. It's everything. Everything. Yeah. Back then, seven. It was everything. Yeah. And so I followed the same blueprint, to be honest, or, or that I did. But we never broke through. We won, turned it around, but we never broke through. We lost to. Uh, I made it to the state. I made it to the regionals, um, and then the quarterfinals to get to the state. Even though I had more, I had talent. We never quite broke through. I wanted to be, I wanted to win a title there. And I stopped coaching the last year that they brought all these, that stuff, you know, the different divisions. I was like, it was perfect timing for me to go to college. Well, well coach, yeah. I, I, I want to get back to the 09 season, but I did, I did yeah. want to ask you, you know, when you coach high school basketball, you coach for love. You, you don't get paid yeah. a lot to coach high school yeah. basketball. It, it may help you get a job in a, in a, in a, in a building, but you do it because you love it. Love college, it. You, can, you can make a good living coach, coaching college yeah. basketball. Um, do, how do you compare the challenges? I mean, do, do you love both? Do you prefer one to the other? I mean, obviously, you know, coaching at Georgetown, it's an amazing opportunity. But how, yeah. how, do, you, how do you compare the, 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 the two jobs? Um, I compare the two jobs as just who I am as a man. My goals change yearly my standards for living don't i've never been chasing profit i chase after purpose mm -hmm. and my purpose is to lead and guide young men i just happen to elevate to the highest level of it and i get paid a really good salary mm -hmm. uh, but my mission is the same i love building young men i love building people uh, i love building young men involved in athletics and getting them to understand the disciplines of being successful on the court is the same disciplines to help you be successful off. Um, and so the transition is, yeah, especially now it's, it's a, it's a lot more transactional uh, of, of a relationship for sure. You know, I had some, I had some cool dudes. If, if name, image and likeness was around when they were in school, I'm telling <laughs> you these dudes would have made some money when they were in high school. You know, <laughs> these dudes were some cool flamboyant <laughs> dudes. Um, so, um, you know, people say it can be transactional, but I think if one thing about young people, they know when you got their best interest. They know when you genuinely, you know, care about them and their lives. And 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 and, and so um, that's the difference. You know, yes, it is commercial and it's transactional a lot at the college level, especially. But I'm in it for the same reason, man. I, you know, it's the same thing. And, uh, you know, whether I'm, you know, I'm coaching high school or the associate head coach at Georgetown or one day when I hopefully, you know, run my own program, it's about it's about my mission and my purpose in life and, and which is to touch and guide their lives and, and help them, you know, reach after their goals and do the things that they want to do in life. Um, and uh, so that's that's just me. You know, that's, that's just who I am. Well, your, your players are very luck, lucky to have you at, at all levels. Um, but let's go back to the 09 season. So yeah. Julian King, your assistant coach, yeah. uh, coach took over the team. And you guys, Grat, you, you, you lost, as you guys say, man and some other great players, uh, Travis, uh, the whole team. And then you guys picked yourself off the floor and you won another regional title. T -t -t Tell us a little bit about the 09 season, guys. Well, that that oh nine season, that was uh, that's on EJ back that whole year. Mm -hmm. If you ask me, per se, we still you went through Coach Thomas, you know his teachers and the culture, defense, the full court press, and all that. But when it was that year, when it was when we needed somebody to step up, it was it was him. It was EJ. 
Yeah, they came down and, and kicked and, his and, and put a bruising on us too, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> you come down and and, and, and and punish me, EJ. Like I told you, don't leave me, Bob. I told you. <laughs> I had to. I said, "Oh, you gonna leave me for these little scrubs? I got some for you." <laughs> uh, it was. It was definitely. It was definitely tough. In the sense that Coach King is he's a he's a good coach, but he just he didn't have the oomph that Coach Thomas had. When it came to words to, of encouragement to have like like us, us running through walls, he was a good guy. But yeah, it was it's, it was something that was it was kind of missing. So, but we 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 did we kept the same goals and values, and and we just kept pushing through through adversity like we've always been doing with Coach Thomas being here and being gone. We just. Put our head down, and we we knew what we what we had was already solid. It wasn't nothing different, but just the, the coach. But everything we just we stepped, kept kept with the same stuff, and we may do what we may do with. Cause ain't nobody think we was going to go that far that year. Neither. Yeah, they probably, they I only did. think they thought we was going with district. Yeah, and then we got Bill, we got did we did pick up Billy Rowland. But everybody was like, "Y'all ain't gonna do nothing." Yeah, <laughs> Coach they, Thomas gone, man gone, Travis gone. Y'all ain't got no gone. big man. T gone. Like we, <laughs> we had nobody. You know, they was like, "Yeah, they they gonna be they gonna be down and out." Fight. Yeah, because I that think that community that is hard on them, man. I used to feel bad for you, man. Man, that, I <laughs> I used to feel bad for y'all, man, because it it became a point where they knew. Okay, I better not say nothing to that man, but. They would still be barking at y'all. I could not. They, <laughs> they, they would be hard on them guys, man. It was terrible. It was well, definitely terrible. Well, guys, one thing I want to talk about, and EJ talked about this a little bit, how you guys have supported each other uh, through the years. But I would like to talk about the fact that you won the championship. What has it meant to your to your lives, your, your, your uh, post-high school life, but maybe even your post-basketball lives? I thought maybe... Each of you guys can talk about uh, how your personal journey was affected by the fact that you guys, you know, had this historic win, um, you know, state championship. Why don't we go in the same order we started? Why don't we go, uh, Anthony? Why don't, you, why don't you go first? What, what did the, what did the win mean to you in your life? Well, for me, <clears throat> it was bigger than basketball. Before Coach Simons got there, um, my realist my realistic expectations weren't even thinking about going to college. I really didn't have, I would say, the grades or the SAT scores to get there before Coach Thomas got there. And once he got there, I flourished and everything about my game on and off the court changed for the better. And like a lot of stuff today, we all still live by the principles that he instilled in us. Yeah. Anyway, well, Anthony, now, I also want to thank you. Again. I think people take for granted What's like when you get good coaches. Like uh -huh. Coach Thomas is still probably the best coach I've ever had. Ever. Going yeah. playing college and professional basketball. He completely changes your mindset of how you think of every way of life. Yeah. Did you have good coach? Did you have good coaching overseas, Anthony? Uh, yeah, but I'm not in college. I mean, college. Yeah. Jimmy, he he's a different character. Yeah. He's a complete uh 360 from Coach Thomas. Right. Yeah. Well, you you, you did your five years. You did a red shirt. And you had a, you had a really solid career. So you 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 did your part. Um, and also, look, man, I want to thank you again for for putting this together with your, all your great teammates. This has been a blast. So why don't we go to EJ next? And you you mentioned this before that you guys have been, your your brothers have been supporting you through life. But what about the fact that you actually won? Uh, and you didn't get second, you didn't get to the finals, but you actually won it. What what has it meant to your to your life, your your basketball career and your post-basketball life? It well, it's it solidified me in the city for basketball uh basketball wise. Because a lot of people always like just overlook me and and put me in the shadow with other players that they felt like was better than me in in all aspects of like rec ball and AAU, YBOA, high school. So to come out on top, it, it, it solidified me as one of the best, or if not the best, because I did get For a sure. ring. A, a lot of those guys didn't get a ring in. I did it. I did it from the ground up, and Blue can tell you all. I'm really tell you, but Blue, he always been. That's like that's my brother. He always been close, like because we from the <laughs> same hood. So he know we we both always just been there. So he's seen 
me come from pretty much nothing to here. And it, and it's crazy that we all did it together as like a brotherhood. So that 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 means a lot too. But it 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 just is 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 something is it's something is it something special. Words can't even like describe how I feel and how that win made me feel. It's like it was a roller coaster of, of all emotions from outside of basketball to basketball, like not being good at this. Coach Thomas working on me with, with basketball, then he's learning me in my personal life and just connecting basketball into my personal life. So it was just for me, it was just like a, just a roller coaster of this everything, ups and downs, and to come out on top. It, it, it makes me a better a better person every every day. I, I wake up and I and I go hard every single day because it's nothing that I never did before. It's yeah. like it's all it's instilled in me. I know every day to go hard from practice and how I prepare my my daily days, like life. And, and the, the decisions that I make will always kind of like just come full circle. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, well, well thanks, CJ. It's, it's beautiful thoughts. Thank you, sir. Uh, now, now, Travis, you were you were such a uh, you were, you were such a, a, a joy to watch. You made the game look easy. I remember the way you know the way you shot the ball and stuff. Uh, you know, when when in that title, what what did what did it mean to you? And and what. Did, and have, how often have you thought about it over the years? Is that something that you think about every day, every week, once a month? But what about you? I mean, it meant a lot. Like uh, like we mentioned earlier, I got a lot of family that either played at TC or from the city, played somewhere within the city. So they they always bring it up a lot because, of course, that was their goals, too, when they were playing. And mm -hmm. I'm the one in the family that actually got it accomplished. So it means a lot, you know, it's, uh, winning a high school title, it, it's it's a little deeper because majority of the time, your high school title is like where you're from, that's your city. Yeah. So it's something you hold up to as a child. You, you grew up in that city, you lived in that city, you grew up with your with your friends, your brothers that you played with. So winning the title with them is something that you always want to hold. And then just not many people do it. So mm -hmm. the fact that it's not done by many people and then it's within your city, like you could go anywhere, anybody that's a basketball fan, they'll bring it up and they they'll understand it. And just it just helps you in life as well, because if you think about it, like just the hard work and stuff that Coach Thomas instilled in us to make. If, uh, if you do hard work, you accomplish your goals. That applies to anything in life. If you think about it, if you work hard about anything, whether it's your, your job, whether it's your your life, your family, anybody that you're associated with, you're going to accomplish your goals. But you got to put the work in. You can't you can't half-ass it because yeah. you're going to get half-ass results. So yeah. it, it all comes full circle. Yeah. Hey, no, hey Travis, do, do you remember what I used to tell you when you used to shoot the ball doing that run? If you miss? Oh, then the, the, yeah, they, people say, still say that, right? Because yeah, well, well, tell, tell people if, uh, if I miss the basket move. <laughs> <laughs> and people would still say that. So yeah, that's it. Travis. I used to tell them that if you miss, try, don't worry about it. It wasn't your fault. The basket was <laughs> the was wrong with the ball that time. Don't don't worry about. It. Keep shooting. <laughs> yeah, he def he definitely made it look easy for sure. He so, did. He yeah. had one of the most beautiful strokes that I. <laughs> that yeah, I, I still remember that shot. He could, he could shoot the basketball. Uh, well, thank, thanks, Travis. Well, J Javante, uh, you know, you you mentioned you you already brought up uh, what it's meant to you in in different contexts in terms of your work and stuff, but. Oh, that, oh, I lost CJ here. Um, but what about what about you? Uh, uh, you, you seem like uh, you know a hard nosed, tough guy. Uh, what, what did what did it mean to your to your basketball and also your post basketball life? The fact that you're a state champion. And I think it meant everything at the time. Um, at this, you know, to this day, it's still a major accomplishment. Um, I think it's well, I know it's something that they can't take away from me. Is it we 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 made history. So anytime you speak about state champions, especially in Northern Virginia, you got to mention us. Yeah, I mean, and understandably so. Um, but I think the greatest thing about it, and I think you hear all of the fellas talking about this, Coach Thomas definitely instilled great basketball principles in us, and we were a hell of a team. But I think more so than anything else, he prepared us for life after basketball, mm -hmm, being mm -hmm, men, mm -hmm. going to work. Um, setting goals, setting standards. I mean, I keep up with all these guys on the call and 
I know what they're doing, and I'm 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 damn proud of what everybody just has achieved and what everyone is doing right now with their life. Um, so like Coach Thomas said, he made us unbreakable. It's an unbreakable bond. Um, and I, I'm I'm sorry, Javante. Were you finished? Man, man, you gotta go back. Oh, did I break out? Yeah. yeah, we lost like the last probably the last minute or so. You want uh, you want to wrap? Oh, that no, up? that's good. I just uh, say I know Trav and I used to talk about it, even at elementary school being a state champions because you know. My father played at TC, was a state champion. It was something that I wanted to be, uh, not even knowing what a state champion, champion was. So it means everything. And like I said, I'm just proud of the accomplishment. They can't take it away from you. And I know our team is one of the best to come out of the city. So yeah. did well, we you catch well, that? Yeah, I think uh, we, we did a poll on our, on our Facebook group, North, Northern uh, Nova Legends. And you guys were the voted the second best team in Northern Virginia history. Behind the 77 Titans. Uh, yeah. So it's, it's interesting that those two teams are seen by people. Who, so that's why, uh, Respectable. Uh, Anthony, <laughs> you guys get more respect than you think. Because As we when should, it came sir. to voting, everyone, <laughs> everyone knows how good you guys were. You guys were voted the second best team in the history of the, of the area. So, um, mm -hmm. But anyway, well, let's, Blue, let's, let's go to you next. And I, you, you covered some of this ground. But I, I know the coach was, was very important to you in your development. But what what about the win and, and your brothers? What did it mean to uh, to you through the years? Um, for me, it meant a whole lot. As far as uh, my family, I come from a bunch of guys who football, baseball, basketball, and for me to win the state championship in basketball, you know, it's something I can brag about with with my family. <laughs> Uh, I got an older cousin. He won a state championship in football, but you know we get, you know, we have them conversations, and just like when I, when I'm in the area anywhere, and I'm, I might see an uncle or a great uncle, and they brag. You know, everybody's gonna brag. This one nephew, you he did, you know. So, for I guess I say for, for me and my brothers, Coach Thomas, and for you know, the city as well, the the community, because when they, I still get PCF on discount. Uh, so it's it's it, it, it's it's definitely like you said, like Baby said, the piggyback they can't take it, they can't take it away from. We definitely made history, and the fact that the matter, um, like just this this small, all small little city, you know, what I'm saying to do that and be the uh second team in TC history to do it, it's it's a blessing, and it's definitely it definitely uh. It's it's definitely entertaining when I'm in this in around Alexandria and, and running the sports fans and, and you know what I'm saying everybody that watched us t going off run. Yeah, it was fun watching everybody ju jump on you guys bandwagon, wasn't it? So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, well, Tomas, I, I don't know, if, are you still around? Um, what about yeah, you? I mean, you? You've made a career of basketball, and I, I guess as you were saying, you, you hadn't experienced that much success before you before you joined this team. So. I I bet you it probably meant a lot to your career. Man, till this day, we even go by um Blue came up with this idea. I love it, I love it. <laughs> Didn't get enough of it. Um the, everything I've played on, we say that. Everything I've played on, we say that till this day. I go by the um Coach Thomas on that said this, you must do what others won't to live like others can't. I, I tell my teammates this all the time. And we put in the work. Like I put in the work on different teams and I make sure. I go by these philosophies, like try to score 10 points a quarter, keep the team under 10 points a quarter. I still go by that. Yeah. And try to get deflections, like 30 deflections as a team. I go by, like, I go by these principles that was imbruted in my mind at, at such a young age because that's all I knew. I didn't know basketball. So being coached by him and knowing so much, and he get, and it was like from the ground up, he taught us. Because we had individual workouts, we had team workouts, we, like we were so excited to run on, on game day that we didn't <laughs> want to run. No we would run plays fifty times in practice. So on game days, we didn't even we didn't want you to come. We didn't want to go down and we settled out to run a play on you. We was we was a track team, <laughs> and no, and life has just been like life has just been like keep going, keep going and improving and knowing going by what you do. Stand by what you say. Set your goals early. Set your mm -hmm. goals early and write your goals down. And I see the improvement. I see the, the connection. Like, my situation in life has always been different, but I've always been grateful, you know? Meeting these people that I've met, 
I remember meeting T Block, Bebe, like these were all wonderful kids. And I remember YBOA was like, they was fighting each like they they will fight. Like they, Coach Thomas didn't really he understood it because South Side versus I don't even know what other side that they will fight on they will people will be on the same basketball team and they will fight each other before a game. <laughs> And they're all in Alexandria. And I'm like, yo, what is this? What am I coming into? This was ninth grade. And they will fight each other before a basketball game and then go chill with each other after. I'm like, what is this? <laughs> it was a different time. So it was just different. It was just different, different, man. And it was all an experience. I'm just grateful. Yeah. Love these guys. And they each and every single one of them is in my heart daily. And I'm telling these kids what they can do, what they can't do. And I don't know, that that was, that was, that was, those years are great. Don't forget, we can't forget those years. Those years was great. And I'm just grateful. Yeah. Yeah, was, again, uh, thanks, Samas. Again, it was even great for fans. The fan, real fans of the game of Northern Virginia basketball, we haven't got it either. It was such a, a great moment for us. Well, guys, look, this this has been amazing. Uh, thanks again for taking the time. Does anyone have any any parting uh, thoughts or maybe even some funny stories about Coach that you want to embarrass him with or anything else? <laughs> hey, I, 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 I tell you what, don't be late right. to an Ivan Thomas practice. I'm telling you, I, I, listen, tell you, I, I had to run many a stadiums after practice. Hey, listen, hey, hey, you, you remember that time? Hey, I think this was my junior year. Me and Flex, I was I was staying with that Marcus house that day, and I think it was a Saturday practice, and I was late, and it, me and Marcus was late. He said, "Oh, don't worry about, it. don't worry about, it. I got something for y'all." Baby, practice, phone, practice man. after that, the breakdown. All right, time to go. Cause say, "Yeah, y'all meet me in the hall." He ain't getting no reception in that you, basement. I'm gone. Can y'all hear me? No, you back yeah. on. Yeah. Okay. We hear you. Um, yeah. I think uh, Coach, Coach, Coach made us hit them stairs in the TC hallway in the old TC. So oh, you you man. you running up and down and say I, I, I wasn't late no more. For the, rest, <laughs> for the rest of the time I played for Coach Tom. Um, no, but like I said, um, Coach Tom is because I'm gonna say my closing remarks. I um, mean, let the rest of the fellas go. Ultimate motivator, most prepared man that I've ever met as far as coaching. Like you 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 heard you heard the guys talk about different ways he motivated us. We had to punch in the time card to practice. We're we're, we're teenagers. <laughs> <laughs> he'll award you and I, I see him using, using this for uh for his college team right now you coach you done switched it up now I think you're giving shirts now you used to give us the jersey yeah, yeah the belt you're doing the belts now yeah, yeah. Yeah. he said give us a we used to have a blue hard hat whoever you know yeah, I used to find that. different ways it wasn't always about who was scoring or who was doing x y and z just the ultimate motivator and the guy that was always prepared and <laughs> cool. I thank him for everything because I mean he's definitely played a, a big role in who I am today. And I think I'm doing all right. <laughs> yeah. No, nah, for real. That's awesome. Any, anybody else? We're gonna, we definitely got to give Coach the last word, but anybody else want to uh, – any, any party? Hey, party hey Coach, you remember that time right before we went to VCU and I went and I went and got my head down before practice and I missed the whole <laughs> practice? You remember that? And y'all made me read that card? I mean, read the little sportsmanship draw in front of everybody? <laughs> <laughs> You remember that, yeah. Coach Thomas? What, no, what happened? What did I do? Did I we, do? Had practice, we had practice before we went to VCU. Right. And I went and got my head done. And I got there. And I think when I ran in there, y'all was – we was breaking for practice. You made me read the sportsmanship joke down VCU. And we was at warm mm -hmm. You ain't tell me. And uh, Coach Hay brought me this. Talking about you got to read this while we warming up. I'm like, no, I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> And I don't he, remember it. Yeah. I remember cause. <laughs> hey, look, like, I'm like, man, he tripping. Right before the end, right after the end, because Tom was walking up to me like, hey, yeah, you gotta go read this. You talking about how I was big. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, but but on a serious note, Coach Thomas, he definitely a, a big part of my life. He one of the reasons why um, I, I'm in the coaching these kids. You know, so why we talking about that? Uh, he always. He 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 always let me uh like do my thing as far as like getting out to 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 the players to us like cause I never forget when we played Scotty he let me cuss their ass out <laughs> before he came in the locker room at halftime and said anything I think I cussed their ass out for like five to a bit excuse my language I'm sorry but uh <laughs> me and Coach Thomas had that that relationship where he 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 wouldn't let me go overboard but he'd let me do me. 
and I and I do appreciate it. Yeah, that's great. That trip to Georgia. That Georgia <laughs> trip. When he cut <laughs> the he's coming back on the <laughs> elevator room trying to sneak out. <laughs> we all had to take that elevator back up with him. We, we, to we, we forgot Coach Thomas was young too. So we tried to sneak <laughs> out. We tried to young too, thinking we slick. <laughs> try to leave the, try to leave the hotel, trying to go try to go get some, man. Coach leaving the hotel. We like, oh man, we got caught. He caught us right in the lobby, right? We walked back in. Right in the lobby. Were we right? leaving like, or were we coming were we coming back in? And he was downstairs. Were we leaving or we were coming back in? I think he was coming back. Uh, I, I thought we was coming, coming back, back too. We was coming Coach back. Thomas right there in that armchair. Yeah. Oh, yes, it yeah, was yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It was in the elevator quiet as hell, like, oh man, we about to get it. Oh man. Yeah. Y'all yeah, look crazy. Well, hey, T, yeah, T was, right. remember, yeah. T, remember uh, the, the day before State's game where everybody was running the hallway and, and T got caught? <laughs> T was running the hallway, knocking on people's doors. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> he tried to run the my room. I said, T, listen, you ain't going to get me in trouble. And I'm, I'm gonna tell on you if Coach come in here and ask you, ask me who, who, who was out there running, I'm definitely gonna say it was you, my boy, because you know better. <laughs> Man, yeah. we had a good time. Well, grateful, us. grateful. Yeah. Well, Coach, well, grateful. you got any, you got any parting words for the, for the, for the fellas? Man, you know, as much as uh, I taught them, they taught me. You know, I was a young guy. Um, and uh, I just, I, I appreciate them because they believed in me yeah. as much as I believed in them. It take a lot to go against everything that you grew up with and the people in your community and for them to rock with me. Mm. Um, and I know that's what they did. People don't understand TC is, is a different type of community. <laughs> they believed in me. They believed in and what I was teaching them and that that I had their best interests. And that is it's, it's undoubtedly that that 2018 just is just that the best team. It's, it's, it's the best team. They did I've never from 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 college to 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 to, to high school, I've I've never had a team that functioned like that ever. Um and so uh, I'm just very appreciative of the opportunity that they that they gave me to be a part of their lives. Uh, they could have they could have very easily bucked the system and did like every you know every other team or coach that tried to get there. And but they gave me an opportunity and they believed in my message and they 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 rock with me. And I love these guys, man. And you know all of those guys just 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 hold a special. Uh, place in my heart and uh I, I, you know people ask me why I am who I am is because of my parents and and I you know my dad always just would say you know your, your mission in life is to help people and if you can't help a man at the very least don't hurt him um and so that's just how I live my life um but but all these guys hold a dear 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 um place place in my heart and uh, yeah, I would always give Blue uh, his minute to, to to Blue was my toughness. He he was my toughness. <laughs> that was that was my tough guy, man. And if I needed to lock somebody down or send a message, uh, uh, I, 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 Blue was my guy. <laughs> that was my guy. That Blue was my guy, dude. Blue was my guy because in life, that's that's Blue. Don't even know like he had this inner toughness that you know even though he you know not to put his business out there he had a tough existence but he was born with this toughness that that was going to allow him to you know break through and overcome everything and mm -hmm. uh, and that's that same toughness that that he displayed he always had a all of those guys had a special place in my heart but but, but I wouldn't give up on blue and I think he knew it. I just that was, that was that's Draymond, that's Draymond Green right there. Yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, hey real. Hey, real, you see me at the Jack Spot every day talking, about, man, go see Miss Thomas. I mean Miss Lewis, man. Go see Miss LeBron. <laughs> at the Jack Spot. We had a Jack Spot. Oh my hey, I still I think I told this story when I first got off. I remember when the first time I had y'all on the track and I was doing roll call. 
And I was, I was coach. You remember Coach Draft, the little short white guy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Germany. He was calling yeah, everybody by their, by their name. And he, he was like, is, is uh, Dominique such and such here? And everybody was looking around. Y'all didn't know each other. Government. <laughs> All y'all do was do. Man, uh -huh. oh y'all squeeze <laughs> nicknames. <laughs> nicknames. EJ, nobody knew y'all real name. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was so funny. That's an Algerian like, thing. Black nah, we don't know. Who, who, who is that? No. Man? Is that? Oh, yeah, he right here. Oh, that's he man. Right that's oh, man. man, I never knew your real name. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> I love you guys, man. Yeah. Are you too, coach? Yeah. Are you well, too, coach? Well, well guys, uh, again, this this has been great. I, I'm I'm just uh, uh, honored thing. that you guys decided to do this on on my medium. So, uh, you know, this this has been great. Hopefully, you know, maybe at some point we can get together and talk some more because I'm sure you guys got more stories. But uh, you know, you guys out at the Titans, or, or so, we, the rest of the rest of the area really looks up to what you guys do, and it's just so funny because I, that story you told about Blue going over to St. Stephen's. Um, and not feeling comfortable with that, and you know, and when when TC would come out to to Robinson, when they walk into the gym, the aura that these guys had, I mean, they they were like they were like kings to us, and you know, we had to try to beat these guys. Um, <laughs> so you know, you, you guys have meant a lot to Northern Virginia basketball and, and your team in particular, uh, what you guys were able to do. So anyway, I'm just glad I got to meet you guys tonight, and uh, let's definitely keep in touch. Um, yes, and uh, mate, and let's let's talk again down the road, man. Yeah, you you sir, appreciate you. yeah one yeah. more thing. Um, oh, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, Jay told me to uh plug Who Mountain Dubai is him and Coach King's basketball academy. They're expanding the growth of uh basketball in Dubai, and they also have a podcast, uh, Bridging the Gap, which they talk about all things sports. Oh, awesome. Tune into that also. Is that for you said for Coach King? Is that Coach, Coach King, King and Ryan Yates? Yeah, Coach King, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And I also got the NGU Foundation out here. Never oh, yeah. Up. Yeah. Never give yeah, up what I'll do, guys, I'll also I'll put any information you want me to share. I'll put it in the comment section so people can find, you know, you know, whatever, whatever interest you guys have. You know, I'll make it easy for them to find you guys and your interest. Got you. Right. Hey, okay. man, Enjoy I want you to get get the guys. Make sure we 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 get on a group chat. My number is still the same, guys. You, I ain't never changing it. But <laughs> I want us all to get, you know, make sure we, you know, over this next month of February, January, about over. Let's let's get together. Y'all come to a game. Sure. You don't have to come to the game. Let's get let's go to dinner. For sure. Yeah, all we right. can do it. All right. For sure. Hey, let's, we all hey. Hey. Let's, I love y'all. For sure. And Julian, right. thank you so much again for having us. We yes, definitely sir. appreciate thank it. You, sir. I appreciate thank you. It. Oh, it was great, man. Appreciate I enjoyed it. Brown, man. I appreciate this. It's been a long time. I and man, thank time. you for putting it together, brother. Yeah. yeah. Well, Anthony, yeah. Everybody, yeah. Here, everybody here. got everybody together. It was great, guys. Hey, fellas. All right. Let's do it again soon, guys. All right. All right. Take care. Everyone be safe.